the Earth over its four and a half billion year history has been pummeled by asteroids. Eroded by wind and rain. Covered over with flowing lava. Wrinkled and gouged by shifts in its crust. Most traces of its distant past have long since been destroyed. But there is a place where clues to the early history of our planet are still largely intact. The moon. Scientists have been reconstructing its history by scouring its surface mapping its mountains and craters, and probing its interior regions. What are our own planet's beginnings? By going back in time to the mysterious birth of the moon, The space age made possible rockets with enough power to blast humans and their life support systems into orbit. More than 300 manned space flights have shown that humans can live and explore beyond our Earth. None of these missions have done more to shape our connection to the cosmos and define who we are than the fabled flights of Apollo. But not for reasons you might think. We sent astronauts to the moon as a symbol of confidence in the face of the great Cold War struggle. Many hoped that would lead to further journeys to Mars and to an age of living in space. Those goals proved too grand in the face of all the preoccupations, turbulence, and chain crash onto our own planetary shores. Landing on the moon was a giant leap for mankind. But it's what the astronauts picked up from the lunar surface that may turn out to be Apollo's greatest legacy. When the astronauts of Apollo stepped out of their landing craft, they entered a world draped in fine sticky dust, strewn with rocks and pocked with craters. They walked and rambled about picking up rocks, 382 kilograms worth, that they packed for the return flight. Back in earthbound labs, Scientists went to work probing the rocks for clues to one of the most vexing questions in all of science. Where did the moon come from? The answer promised to shed light on an even grander question. Where did Earth come from? And how did it evolve into the planet we know today? The Apollo, the Apollo rocks have brought us closer to the answer, but basic mysteries still remain. The Moon orbits Earth at an average distance of 384,400 kilometers. It's relatively small, with less than 1% the surface area, 2% the volume, and 1% the mass of Earth. With no atmosphere, temperatures range in Celsius from minus 233 degrees at night to 123 degrees during the day. As the brightest object in the night sky, the moon has guided people for millennia by defining the rhythms of life 
and animating our myths. The nature of the moon began to come into focus four centuries ago. Galileo Galilei had heard of an instrument built by Dutch opticians capable of seeing faraway things as though nearby. Galileo, in many ways the first modern scientist, saw this new instrument as a tool to help settle a long-standing question. What was the nature of the heavens, and how did the world of men fit within it? To some philosophers, the moon was a perfect crystalline sphere of divine substance, free of Earth's imperfections. Galileo, with his telescope, saw a more familiar reality. He noted mountains and valleys on the moon, features like those of Earth. Flash forward to the modern age of lunar studies. 1959 saw the first in a fleet of probes launched by the Soviet Union and the United States to shoot close-up pictures, take readings, and crash onto its surface. We learned then just how different the Moon is from Earth, with its cratered and desiccated landscapes, and lack of a magnetic field. That intensified a debate about the Moon's origin that went back centuries. The so-called fission theory, championed by George Howard Darwin, son of Charles Darwin, held that the Moon was once part of the Earth, cast off by the rapid spin of its young parent. For proof, look no farther than the Pacific Ocean, a giant hole in the Earth's surface. Then there's the capture theory, which holds that the Moon was a wayward object that floated through our solar system and was pulled into orbit by Earth's gravity. A third idea came from the American astronomer Thomas Jefferson Jackson C., also known for his attacks on Einstein's theories and for charges of plagiarism that were leveled at him. He suggested that the Moon formed near Earth and gradually fell under its gravitational spell. In that case, the Moon should be a mini-Earth, which we now know it's not. Bypass across the board, scooter, no action. The astronauts of Apollo lifted off on a series of missions to get a close-up look at the Moon and perhaps settle the debate. Because there's no atmosphere there, the astronauts entered landscapes that are nearly frozen in time. They could scour the lunar surface for evidence of events going back almost to the time of its birth. Indeed, eons of impacts had opened up the Moon's interior, leaving a wealth of information strewn about their landing sites. Scientists had already noticed that some large old craters were surrounded by concentric rings. You can see one of the most pronounced examples in this image of the Mare Orientale, captured recently by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or LRO. The colors show differences in elevation. The old view was that the impact had melted the rock below. A newer view held that the impactor had actually splashed down on a molten surface. That gave rise to the radical notion that early in its history, the Moon's surface was covered in a vast ocean of magma. When the astronauts arrived, they found relatively light rocks known as anorthosites. Their presence suggested that heavier material had sunk toward the Moon's interior, forcing lighter material to the surface.
the rocks they brought back were found to be strikingly similar to those on Earth, in part because they share forms of oxygen, called isotopes, that scientists regard as blood types for solar system bodies. Then there was this. The moon appeared to be completely, utterly dry, with no evidence that water was ever present on its surface. Not long after the last Apollo mission went into the history books, this initial evidence coalesced into a radical new idea, first presented in 1974 by the scientist and artist William Hartman. His theory of the moon's formation is played out in this contemporary scenario. Sharing an orbit with Earth was a Mars-sized body called Thea, named for a Titan in Greek myth who gave birth to the moon goddess Selene. Its orbit became unstable and it headed in Earth's direction 